Under President Donald Trump, the United States is holding China accountable more than ever before. Learn how this budding rivalry will end in catastrophe, next on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. There are five nations, the uh, U.S., Canada, Australia, and New Zealand, and then uh, Britain, and they've established a uh, what they call a Five Eyes Intelligence Agencies, where they combine all their intelligence. And they recently released a report that is uh, just very uh, shocking about the uh, coronavirus. And it really should sober the entire world if they truly understand what is happening here. China has tried ferociously to overtake the U.S. economy for years, and they've probably done so now. And also, they, uh, they have driven to uh, overtake our modern science, and uh, they've uh, tried very hard to uh, surpass us in that area as well, because science has a lot to do with the quality of your economy and uh, how strong it is. That's a, an important area to them as well. And of course, that uh, has to do and relates to this uh, coronavirus. But uh, this crisis have, has cost the United States trillions of dollars. Our debt is soaring toward $30 trillion, if you can even imagine that. And one reporter said, and one commentator, this monster debt is going to assure that the United States is no longer a superpower. Now, that's a very uh, sober forecast, but it's something we ought to consider. About four years ago, I wrote an article in the Trumpet magazine about China, and the title of it was, China is steering the world toward war. I wrote that four years ago. And I explain in that article, for seven decades, the United States has had naval dominance in East Asia and the China, South China Sea. And uh, there's now, it, it, there's a total change. China is domineering and bullying East Asia and bullying them into submission and uh, really uh, causing some serious problems. Now, that is really, really critical to the United States because through that South China Sea, just about one-third of the maritime commerce travels through there annually, one-third of it. And that's about $5.3 trillion annually. So you can see what a colossal danger this could be for the U.S., because China could literally stop all of that flow of commerce or, or eliminate anybody that they didn't want to go through there if they became aggressive militarily, which they are doing more and more all the time. So we need to be aware of what's going on there. This is really critical. And uh, I, I want to first comment a little more on the coronavirus and what has happened in China in that respect. Over the years, I think everybody knows that uh, China and, and the U.S. have been clashing, and it's really uh, uh, not a good relationship. And I want to talk to you about that China-America clash and show you that the, that clash is prophesied specifically in your Bible. It is that important that God includes it in Bible prophecy, and it's strikingly clear. Let me read to you a couple of paragraphs here in that report. It was from the Australian Daily Telegraph and written by Sherry Markson. And here's what she wrote. China deliberately suppressed or destroyed evidence of the coronavirus outbreak in an assault on internationally transparency that cost tens of thousands of lives. 
according to a dossier prepared by concerned Western governments on the uh, COVID-19 contagion. That's, uh, I guess, uh, around uh, 250,000 deaths now. Law, a lot of people have died because of this. She went on to say, its major themes include the deadly denial of human-to-human -human transmission. They denied that. The silencing or disappearing of doctors and scientists who spoke out. The destruction of evidence of the virus from genomic studies, laboratories, and bleaching of wildlife, market stalls, along with the refusal to provide live virus samples to international scientists working on a vaccine. Now, they're uh, doing some really terrible things. You could say, well, this is a kind of like a horror story, but look, they are doing all this and they caused the plague. Now, you talk about uh, a brazen aggressiveness. Well, this certainly is it. Also, she said that the People's Republic of China lies and they hide the truth and they refuse to allow any investigation into the origin of the outbreak. They, they won't even let people in there to examine that, and they caused it all a plague on the entire world. And they won't let anybody in there because there's something they're covering up, and they know it, the world knows it, everybody knows it. They may pay off some nations to keep, their, keep quiet, but it, still everybody knows. But the U.S. withdrew a, a funding from this, their controversial experiments because it was likely to spread dangerous viruses in October 2014. They were concerned that it could lead to a global pandemic. And, well, it did. It did. Every indication of that is it came from one of those laboratories in Wuhan. The argument they say here is, is whether it is worth developing these viruses to anticipate and prevent a pandemic when a leak of the virus could also cause one. Well, what about that? Now, do, do they really need to be working on such dangerous viruses and let it let it then uh, uh, leak into the entire world that's what's happened this is a man-made plague the u.s also had a cable sent dated january 19 2018 that uh, sent warnings back to Washington about how inadequate the safety practices and management weaknesses as it conducted research on coronaviruses from bats. There was a shortage of appropriately trained technicians and to safely operate that. Now, that's, those are horrifying facts. It's, it's not speculation. It's what happened. Now, let me give you one more paragraph here that I want to quote, and here's what it says. Despite evidence of human, human transmission from early December, that's December the 6th to January the 20th, well over a month, the uh, China authorities denied it until January the 20th. And then here's what the, the article says. The paper exposes the hypocrisy of China's self-imposed travel bans while condemning those of Australia and the United States, declaring millions of people leave Wuhan after the outbreak. In other words, after the outbreak, they leave Wuhan, but they, they don't go into other provinces of China, but they're allowed to go all over the world from Wuhan. Now, this is cruelty beyond imagination. They're willing to spread that plague. It, it would seem that there's some kind of a pre-planning here of handling that virus if it should break out. And they also began to accumulate all, all the medical supplies that they could in the world and saying that there's no real problem with the, with the virus. They lied to the whole world about that. And at the same time, sent their own people from Wuhan to all over the world, and that's what caused the coronavirus. 
Now that's uh, in a way you'd have to say that's that's on a level it's where it's like an act of war, isn't it? How can you define something like that any other way? Here's what the article said: Thousands fly overseas. Throughout February, Beijing presses the U.S., Italy, India, Australia, Southeast Asian neighbors, and others not to protect themselves via travel restrictions, even as the China Republic imposes severe restrictions at home. Those are facts. I mean, they've they've just that's just the what happened. It was uh, planned on inflicting it on the world. This is the kind of people that are in the Communist Party, and this is what they have done. Now, uh, people are dying all over the world because of that, and uh, far too many, and it could have been prevented, most people believe, uh, 95 percent of it could have been prevented if they had just alerted the world to what was really happening, and they knew it was happening. They knew it, and so did Taiwan and Hong Kong. They were aware and alerted to some terrible problems. But anyhow, there were eight Wuhan doctors who warned about new virus, and they are detained and condemned. That's what happened to those who tried to alert the world and warn the world of what was coming. And they kept the Chinese kept saying, "Well, it's not. It's 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 just moderate. There's nothing really serious about it." Let me just give you one short quote here. A citizen journalist and local businessman, Fang Bin, disappears, and they began to push journalists out of China that were there from the U.S. and Australia and other places. Now let me go on to the article that I talked to you about earlier. China is steering the world toward war. July 2016. Ever since Xi Jinping. Took over as general secretary of the Communist Party of China, his administration has been militarizing the South China Sea and working to push the United States out of East Asia in two island chains, the Parcells and the Spratleys. And incidentally, we have eight maps in color in this article. It's really a study article. It'll make it all clear to you, and see you can see what we're talking about. But here it talks about these two island chains, the Parcels and the Spratleys. China is building a series of man-made islands 800 miles from China's shore. These islands are being installed with anti-aircraft batteries, and fighter jets are stationed on them. And those islands have been claimed by other countries around them, and China just moves in and takes over, whether they like it or not. Not bringing peace to the To the Far East, just China is just domineering the whole area and trying to push everybody around in the world and do some horrible things. And it's not going to get better unless something happens to to change the situation. Now, the oftentimes you'll find that a This trade war that's going on in, around the world, and especially between America and China, and is, is really quite bad. And oftentimes, in the past, trade wars uh, led to shooting wars, just like in World War II. That's what happened. Now we see that China is intimidating all the people in、uh, East Asia, and、uh, they uh, probably uh, preparing to cut the U.S. Off from trade in that area, just as Japan did in World War II, and that, of course, a lot of that was happened after、uh, the bombing of Pearl Harbor.、Uh, but there was a great trade war going on. But I'll tell you this: How can you trust a, a nation, a, a powerful superpower, when they lie and cheat and do everything deceitful that you can possibly imagine? Now this is just news that that that's out there for anybody, and it's not anything that I'm telling you that's that's hidden, unless people are just not watching. But God talks about the、uh, sea gates and how they were given to Israel, the nation of Israel, anciently and uh, modern uh, 
Israel as well, two, really just two nations prophetically. And that's all explained in our book on the United States and Britain and prophecy. But uh, when you talk about the sea gates, it, be, it means uh, sea gates like Panama, Gibraltar, and uh, Singapore, and uh, really in the uh, South China Sea, in that area, it's just one massive gate that carries all this trade right through there, and China is going to control it. They already are virtually doing that. And other nations are complaining, but it doesn't do them any good. The uh, Japanese, after World War started, they, in two months they conquered Singapore, the sea, one of the, well, the really major sea gates of the British Empire. And Winston Churchill said, well, it, it's like the uh, sea gate of, uh, in Gibraltar. And many historians will tell you that that was the fall of Singapore was the beginning of the end of the British Empire. That's how critical these sea gates are. That's how critical they are. Well, I'll just read a short little paragraph here by building artificial islands atop coral reefs in the Spratlys and installing surface to air missile batteries. In the parcels, China is building a new strategic sea gate. A new sea gate. Now, this is the kind of uh, aggression that is dangerous in this world. Isn't it going to lead to a war? Well, it is, certainly. It's going to do that. And these are things we need to be concerned about. Notice what it says in uh, Daniel 9, verse 13. As it is written in the Law of Moses, and remember Daniel is a book only for the end time. Daniel 12, verse 4 and verse 9 tell you that. But here is something written in the Law of Moses, or the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, written by Moses, and all this evil has come upon us. Now what is it, what, why is it all coming upon us? This is upon Israel. And who is Israel? Well, we, we tell you continually who Israel is. And it certainly uh, is not just a little nation in the Middle East. Yet made we not our prayer before the Eternal, our God, that we might turn from our iniquities and understand Your truth. Therefore has the Eternal watched upon the evil and brought it upon us." So God is not happy with the Israel in this end time. And He goes on in Genesis 22 and talks about the sacrifice that Abraham made with his son. He was willing to give up his son, sacrifice him because God told him to. And uh, God was really impressed by that because it's actually a type of the God the Father giving up His Son to this world to pay the price for their sins. And He was crucified for that purpose. And God was so impressed with what Abraham did, He says, All right, I'm going to bless your seed, and I'm going to give them the gates of their enemies. The enemies, those people that want those gates and take over those gates from America, are enemies, God says. They're not friends. You'd better look at that closely. And God said that His Abraham's seed would receive those gates. God would give them to them, these uh, descendants of uh, Abraham. Well, who, who received those gates? America and Britain received them. And I mean all, almost all of them. But that's not the case today. Do you know who, who has most of the sea gates today? China. Now, well, what, 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 what's wrong? God goes on to say that those uh, that that uh, the enemies will seek those sea gates, and because they hate you, I mean that God is being pretty blunt here about about uh, those people that would do things like this. Notice Deuteronomy twenty-eight and verse fifty-two. One of the the uh, verses out of the Pentateuch that it was talking about in Daniel. Here's what it says, And he shall besiege you in all your gates until your high and fenced walls come down, wherein you trusted. Oh, we trusted in our, our own military, in our own power, throughout all the land. And he shall besiege you in all your gates and throughout all the land which the Lord your God has given you. Besiege you in all your gates 
And that is specifically and precisely what is happening today between America and China. It's, it's, it's a prophecy for this end time. How many people understand that? Now, if you request this reprint article that about China, that will explain all that to you and make it very clear. And we have maps there that will just, I think, amaze you of how, how, uh, how it clarifies the whole uh, understanding that we, we need of what's going on there. China now possesses most of those sea gates. Today, uh, God warns us because He loves us, and He doesn't want people to suffer, but He warns America and Britain and the Jewish nation in the Middle East and others about what is happening. You have to see the big overall, the big picture. Who is taking over the sea gates today? And God says, well, look, if you don't quit trusting your military and trusting yourselves, I'm going to take those sea gates back and give them to someone else. We need to take heed to this message. It's a beautiful and a wonderful message that we all should be concerned about. And I'll tell you, even uh, uh, God says uh, the Holy Roman Empire, or the German-led European Union, is doing the same thing in uh, Latin America. And then on just April the 20th of this year, they signed a, a trade deal with Mexico, taking away trade from America. What is happening around the world where it talks about people being besieged in a trade war? Something God says we need to absolutely be aware of. Ezekiel 4, verses 1 through 3 talks about that. And it says that it shall be besieged, and you shall lay siege against it. This shall be a sign to the house of Israel. Who is Israel? This is a sign from God to Israel. We must know who Israel is. And if you'll write for our literature, you'll know all about Israel. The, the whole Bible's about Israel. Everybody's going to become Israel in the future, in the wonderful world tomorrow, and in the, through the resurrection and, and all of the uh, wonderful things that God is going to do. Think about this, and here is a prophecy that really ought to sober us. It says in Ezekiel 13 and verse 8, I am against you. Who is God against? That's the most terrifying prophecy you could ever hear, that I am against you? Well, he's, He warns His people, He warns Israel about the problems that are uh, mounting in this world. He warns them because He loves them, and He doesn't want them to suffer. But you can go on and see in Ezekiel, uh, it talks about uh, God's little flock. Ezekiel 5 and verse 3, and he says, I'm going to bind them in my skirts. And that's just symbolism for God saying, I'm going to protect those people that deliver this message and warn my people, Israel and the world. That little flock is going to be getting this message out there, and a lot of terrible things are coming that are going to bring suffering upon us if we don't get it. And God says, in that intense suffering, there are eight verses in Ezekiel where there it says that these people that are punished are going to get to know God. They don't know God today. They're going to get to know the great God, the great loving God, who, who gave us all of this prosperity we have, the birthright nations. He gave us all this wealth in America and in Britain, all of it. And he said, it, then at this close, there would be a crisis of crises. And out of that, people are going to get to know God even if they rebel today. Isn't that amazing? But oh, the suffering that's coming if we don't wake up. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends.
Request Russia and China in Prophecy for proof of the Far East uniting under Russian leadership and Chinese power to menace the world. Also request China is steering the world toward war. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of the Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.